Hello everyone, my name is Elsie and I'm so excited to be talking to you all today and so excited you are on your way to becoming Junior Rangers. Junior Rangers across the country help MPS Rangers explore, learn about, and protect different national park sites. There are over 300 different Junior Ranger badges that you can earn and they're all very, very important. As you are completing your Shenandoah Junior Ranger book, I hope that you learn all about our park and the different special things that we're protecting here. Now there are over 400 different park sites across the country. In fact, there's about one in every single state. Junior Rangers, right? That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of parks. So as Junior Rangers, you help us protect those places and keep them open because national park sites what I think is the best thing about them is that they're your public lands. So raise your hand really quick, get your pointer finger out, and maybe point at who you think the national parks belong to. Is it your parents? Maybe you're pointing at me. Maybe uh, you think it belongs to us rangers. But you need to be pointing at yourself because public land means that it belongs to each and every single one of you and us rangers, we always want you to be out exploring them. So what are we protecting and preserving? What are we asking you to help us do? What are these things? And there are actually clues in this fancy arrowhead I have on my shoulder right here, this MPS, this National Park Service badge. So everything, all of the resources that we are protecting, preserving, and educating our visitors about are hidden right here. So let's take a look. So the first thing that jumps out at me is this bison right here. Now, a bison is also known as an American buffalo and that symbolizes all of the different kinds of wildlife you can find in national park sites. The next thing that my eye jumps to is this huge, huge, huge tree right here. That's a giant sequoia tree. And that represents all of the different plants that you can find. Then of course we have this beautiful mountain which symbolizes all of the scenery, all of that stunning landscape that you can see in our parks. The next one is a little bit trickier to find. So you might see this white bit coming out of the edge. Now that's a lake. And that lake doesn't just represent the water you can find in our national parks, the lakes, the rivers, the streams. It also symbolizes the recreation, which is a fancy word for fun that we want you to be having here in our parks. Now, the last one is very sneaky. If you remember earlier, I called this the National Park Service arrowhead. And that arrowhead is a symbol too. It's representing all of the different layers of our history that you can find because America is a really old place and there have been layers and layers and layers and layers of history that have been built up. And as rangers, we're trying to tell all of those stories and give the true history of these places. Now there are some fun movements that we can do together to help us remember all of these things and everything that we're protecting and preserving. So the first one, right, we talked about animals. So get your best bunny ears out, your best deer horns. And so when we're saying we're protecting animals, just make a fun animal right there. Of course, next we have our trees and I'm sure you all know how to pretend to be a tree. So maybe get down real small, start off as a seed and then grow, 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 grow up into a big, tall, beautiful tree. Then, we had that recreation, all of the water. So what's a fun thing to do in water? I personally really like to go swimming. So everyone get your best swim stroke out. It doesn't matter if you actually know how to swim or not. You can just uh, pretend, maybe uh, do a little bit of a doggy paddle. Um, you know, I always like freestyle. And then of course we have our scenery. And so pretend that you are looking out you are the tallest, best ranger and you are surveying this valley below you. So what you can do is make sure that you can see and then gently sweep across. Wow, I just saw a beautiful valley in front of me. And of course then for our history, that's representing all of our history. And so together let's do our history, right? 
because it's behind us and we're moving forward and creating our own history. Now, here in Shenandoah, we don't have any bison running around and we definitely don't have any giant sequoia trees. But we do have a lot of other things that make Shenandoah so very special. Now, I think, personally, it's the best national park out of all 417. But today we're going to learn a little bit about the resources and all of the things here that make Shenandoah so special and create our own arrowhead specifically for this beautiful place. Now Shenandoah is pretty big. It's about 200,000 acres. Now, personally, I find an acre something really hard to picture in my head. So instead, think about a football field. You can hold a football field in your head, multiply that one football field by 150,000. Shenandoah is about 150,000 football fields. And there are over 500 miles of hiking trail in that. Our park is about 105 miles long. It's really, really, really long and pretty skinny. And it covers the tops of the Appalachian Mountains. So we have so many beautiful vistas to see. It's also home to a lot of life. We have over 1,400 different kinds of vascular plants, and we have tons of animals too. We have over 190 species of bird, over 50 kinds of mammals, over 20 kinds of amphibians and reptiles, and unnumberable amounts of different insects and invertebrates. So I'm really excited to tell you more about the specific kinds of resources that we have here in our park, and at the end, we'll be able to have our own special Shenandoah arrowhead. Here in Shenandoah, we are nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And the Blue Ridge Mountains don't just stop when uh, Shenandoah ends. They extend much, much farther from Pennsylvania to Georgia. And the Appalachian Mountains, which the Blue Ridge Mountains are part of, stretch even further than that, from Alabama all the way up to Canada. Now, as you can see behind me, these mountains, they're gently rolling is how some people describe them. And that's because they're really, really old. So some of the rock that you can find here in Shenandoah National Park is 1.2 billion years old. Foof! I don't even know if I can think about how old 1.2 billion years is. So these mountains are extremely interesting and important from a geologic set point, but they're also beautiful. And so people travel from all over the country and all over the world to stop at one of our over 70 overlooks, just like where I'm standing now, and look over the valley below and see the incredible scenery these mountains create. You won't be able to find a giant sequoia tree here in Shenandoah, but we have plenty of other beautiful trees that you can see. 95% of our park is covered by forest. And to be honest though, trees only make up a very small fraction of the different kinds of plants that you can find in Shenandoah. We have fungi, ferns, wildflowers. We have over 14 uh, 1,400 different species of vascular plant and my personal favorite is all of the wildflowers that we have. We have over 800 different species of wildflower that bloom throughout the spring and summer. So right now I'm standing next to one of my personal favorites which is milkweed. And you might have heard of milkweed before. Now milkweed, not only is it a favorite of lots of different pollina pollinators like bees, but it's a really special and important food source for one kind of incredible butterfly, which is the monarch butterfly. So monarch butterflies, they migrate thousands of miles from the east coast where we are here in Shenandoah all the way down to Mexico. And so we are so lucky that we have this incredible plant that provides food for this amazing butterfly on its long, long journey. 
So during this time of year when our milkweed is blooming, you might be able to see one of those monarch butterflies stopping for a quick bite before it continues along its journey. Here underneath this log, we'd be able to find a lot of those critters that we're protecting here in Shenandoah National Park. You might notice that a bison is not going to be able to fit under this log. Neither would it want to be living under there. But if I was able to do a log roll, we'd be able to see all of the different insects and amphibians and bugs and all of those creepy crawlies that are so important to our environment here. But like I said, we want to respect all of our wildlife and that means giving it a healthy distance and not just ripping the roof off its home. So even if you see a perfect log that you think might be home to so many of these amazing animals, maybe just leave it, right? Because they might be taking a nap and we don't want to wake anything up. Now I mentioned there might be amphibians underneath this log. An amphibian is like a frog or a toad or even a salamander. And these salamanders are very, very important to us here in Shenandoah. One kind of salamander specifically aptly called the Shenandoah salamander. Now this special kind of salamander is endemic to our park. Now I know endemic is a big word, but that just means you can't find it anywhere else in the entire world, only in Shenandoah National Park. And even within our park, you can only find it at three different locations. Now I'm down here at Rapidan Camp, so pretty far away from where you can find our Shenandoah salamanders. They love to live way, way up top at our highest elevations in kind of these rocky outcrops where it's a lot cooler. Now the Shenandoah salamander is a little bit like the unofficial mascot of our park, but we are a little bit worried about it. Not only is it endemic, it's also endangered. As temperatures are rising, those cooler areas that the salamander likes to live are warming up. And our poor little salamander friends, they're not able to adapt to these warming temperatures quickly enough. And so here in our park, we're really trying to find ways to protect and make sure our salamanders can stay here for as long as they possibly can. We might not have lakes here in Shenandoah, but that doesn't mean that we don't have any water. We have 90 perennial streams in our park, which means these rivers flow year round. And all of this flowing water creates the waterfalls you can see here, like this beautiful one behind me. One of the most popular waterfalls to visit is Dark Hollows Falls, which you can access right from Bird Visitor Center. And all of these waterfalls cascading over our cliffs they create swimming holes that in the very heat of summer, the best thing that you can possibly find to cool off from the heat is one of the incredible swimming holes. And it's a great way to spend your day here. So remember how that arrowhead represents the layers and layers of our history that you can find in national parks and across America? So I'm standing in front of a very important part of Shenandoah's history. I'm here at Rapidan Camp, standing in front of the Brown House. Rapidan Camp is one of the many places in Shenandoah that have historical importance. There are over 320 different structures, so things like houses that are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And there's a reason for why we have so many. People have been living in Shenandoah for over 3,000 years, building and building and building up those many, very many layers of history and all of those stories that we are trying to tell. We have history from the Civilian Conservation Corps, from Skyland Resort, um, the Meadow, as well as Rapidan Camp. So there are many different facets of history. And our history and these stories are still in unfolding today. As people come to visit Shenandoah, they're creating their own stories and making their own history here. That is just as important as the stories that we're preserving and protecting. Look at the beautiful arrowhead we just created. Do you remember all of those movements that we did together? Let's try them again at the end. So 
Here we all have our beautiful Shenandoah salamander. We have those wildflowers that we talked about. Remember over 800 species? This cascading waterfall that is coming down over the rolling Blue Ridge Mountains, all of that scenery. And of course, we do again have our arrowhead representing all of that history. We have so many places on the historic register, I just couldn't pick one. So I kept it as the arrowhead. Now let's try those movements again, right? So we had our animals. So either again, you can do your deer or your bunny, or you can try and do a salamander. I'll try and do a salamander. I don't really know what that would look like, but maybe. Then we have our beautiful trees. And again, our park is 95% forest. So I think a tree is a pretty good thing. So we can all be our trees. Of course, we have that recreation, all of that fun. So let's go swimming again, maybe in one of those water holes, those swimming holes that we talked about. And of course, we can survey the beautiful Shenandoah Valley on any one of our over 60 peaks here in our park. And so get your hand out and make sure that you can see it so very far in the distance. And of course, to finish it off, we have our history, both the history in the past and the histi history that we're making today. So I really hope that you learned all about Shenandoah National Park and are excited to become junior rangers. What would you put on your own arrowhead though? So as being part of the junior ranger team, you not only protect the natural worlds in our parks, but also in your own community and in your own backyard. So what resources and what things do you think are important to protect right outside your door? Maybe you can make an arrowhead creating your own representation, your own symbols of what you love about your own backyard. All right, I hope to see you all in Shenandoah very, very soon. Thank you all, bye.